thank you for clicking on the video welcome back to the channel this is another review for ladies who list atlanta season one episode three triggered we're picking back up where we left off with you're triggered you're triggered and they get robin out of there you know because it's going left really fast and now crystal is going back and forth with tiana because tiana's like girl stop telling her she triggered stop doing that you're not doing you're doing nothing but triggering her more so stop just stop and then crystal's like you don't know her tiana you don't know her you don't girl you're right but i know you stop doing that <laughs> so tiana says she's not here for the mess y'all not finna have her wrapped up in any of this foolishness so she and um tiffany head on about their way um tiana and tiffany leave of course and they don't feel like crystal is being a good friend you know if she is supposed to be the mediator and she's supposed to be you know um the mediator <laughs> like there's no other word she's supposed to be the mediator and she's supposed to be the one that's keeping everything cool and calm and um not not you know one-sided where people are feeling ganged up on nothing like that she's the she's the the nucleus of the of the little group because she knows robin and she, she also knows the other women and so she should have been mediating instead of adding a little salt like she was doing. Um, they also didn't like the fact that she was being so dismissive to Robin and her mental health concerns because they are concerns. And so it's not okay for you to weaponize that and, you know, and try to throw it back in her face. Kiana and Kira, they stay and they talk to Crystal and Crystal ends up sitting there crying about she and Robin going at it like she just feels bad about it, I guess. Kiana, she thinks that it's, you know, about all of, it's about being emotionally in control. And she feels like Robin has no control over her emotions. And you have to be in control of your emotions, you know, in every aspect of her, in your life. Because in her life, she's just, she controls her emotions. And it's just like, so you, she's one of the types that she got it all together she got it all figured out you know it's obvious that she's been seeing a therapist <laughs> and and so she feels like she does herself work and she can do no wrong you know it's it's get on my level because i'm emotionally mature i'm self-aware you know like in in every aspect of my life in business in person in her personal life she's got it together Anyway, um, Crystal doesn't know how she and Robin are going to come back from this. But I mean, listen, they're going to have to talk about it, I guess. Um, Robin, she feels bad as well about the night before. She's in yoga, meditating and crying. I mean, crying, trying to hold back the tears. But everything that man's saying is, is, is it's, it's got a grip on her. It's convicting her spirit. Um, and she also doesn't know, you know, what's going to happen between she and Crystal. She doesn't know if they're going to come back. Kiana sits down with her husband, her 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 husband slash homie, because I don't like there's no romance there. Like, I don't see chemistry at all. It's just that's the homie. We They probably make great money together. You know, you know what that gives when it's a nice arrangement. <laughs> um. Anyway, they talk and they, they talking about the dinner. And um, she says that she likes Robin, you know, even after the dinner. It's like, girl, you didn't, I, I couldn't tell that you liked her <laughs> because you was around trying to gather the girls together to, you know, all get on one accord so y'all can all tell this lady no. But now it's, I mean, I like her as a person. Like, she's cool. Like, I, you know, and, and when we have been around each other in different spaces, like, I like her. She's really cool. Now she real cool. Girl, I can't keep up. I cannot keep up. Um, anyway, she wants to, you know, flesh it all out and maybe have a dinner, you know, one-on-one. -on -one, and he, he agrees that they should do that. Okay, Tiana, Tiffany and Tiana, they meet. And um, they're meeting with uh, a designer. His name is Mr. Hibachi, Michael Hibachi. Um, he's, a, he's a designer. And they are meeting at a furniture store. And while they're there, he tells her that, he has a condo in Midtown that he's, you know, ready to put on the market. It is a um, two-story 
and it's a corner unit, you know, so amazing views and she can't wait to see it. He also doesn't have an agent, doesn't have a realtor, so she might have a job and she, you know, of course she, she's more than happy to oblige. Um, while they're there, they talk about the dinner and they both agree, of course, again, that Crystal was very much the catalyst to, you know, the whole outburst that Robin had. Um, they both empathize with Robin and her mental health concerns. You know, Tiffany says she's going to reach out to Robin so that they can link up. So she can just check in with her. You know, she wants her to know that she's there for her. Um, she, you know, it's, it's nice when you, I guess when, when you're somebody that deals with mental health issues, having a friend that understands not only do they empathize, but they, or not only do they sympathize, but they can empathize with you because they too have gone through the same thing. Um, so she's here for her. Okay. Crystal, she goes to see her therapist. She tells her therapist what happened with Robin and she's honest, you know, about her part and everything. Crystal, she realizes that, and I don't like this. Crystal girl, stop using this lady's um, past childhood trauma again as a weapon. It's like, you don't have to keep pointing out that she had it hard growing up. You don't have to keep pointing that out. You don't have to keep pointing it out. <laughs> you know, because now, now, now it makes me think that you keep her around so that because you want to help her. You want to be there for her. You want to help her. You want to, you know, um, put her back together again. And it's like, girl, your motives and your intentions are all off. And I know that they are. Um, it shows. Anyway, she says she's just not realizing the ramifications, you know, of Robin's childhood and being a teen mom and all of that. Being abandoned by her own mom. Like, she, she she's just going to go ahead and say, that all of that childhood trauma is why Robin just exudes a little a little bit of bitterness, you know, f towards other women. And she understands now and she gets it. And so now what you going to do, fool with her with, a, with kid gloves? Like, I don't, I don't know. But anyway, um, she tells her therapist that, you know, it got physical and Robin did hit her. And she's like, oh, well, that's a boundary issue. And you're definitely going to have to set boundaries. And let her know that enough is enough, you know? So she has that to stew on. Kira, she takes B. Simone to look at another condo. And this time it's in a building that Robin frequents. And so she's trying to be in and out. She shows her the condo and it's nice. It's another, you know, half a million. Um, this one is way nicer than the last one. Um, still not what she's looking for. But the closet is nice. The bathroom is nice. It's nice. It's just... Um, a little bit too small for her, a little tight. She, she, she wants some space space. And it's like, girl, go on and get a house then. You want some space space. Get a house. <laughs> go, listen, the houses in Atlanta that are half a million dollars are just as nice as these condos in Midtown. But I get it. She's a single woman. She don't, she don't want a yard to, 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 you know, upkeep. Like who, who going to do that? <laughs> they were talking about that in the first, in, in the last episode, like who going to cut the grass? Who going to, who going to do that? <laughs> Who's taking out the trash? Like she don't want, she don't want property, but you know, she, she, she's good on a condo. So they going to keep looking. Robin and Tiffany, they meet for dinner. And you know, Robin, of course, is happy that somebody gets her. She and Tiffany share their experiences with depression and anxiety. In her confessional, Robin calls herself weak. And, you know, of course, she gets tearful. And it's like, girl, don't do that. Don't say that about yourself. You're not weak. Don't say that about yourself. But I guess she's trying to say, I know I have this hard exterior, but I, I'm, I'm definitely, there's definitely vulnerability there, you know. Um... She shares that, you know, she's was, di you know, I guess her diagnosis, suffering from ADHD, anxiety, depression, all that. Tiffany suffered from anxiety and panic attacks, um, more so than depression. She felt like she was going to walk out the house and die. Like it was, it was bad. And, you know, she said she want to hook Robin up with her therapist. And, um, Robin shares a little bit of her childhood trauma with Tiffany. Um, just as I suspected that whole abandoned at 16, that would definitely meant she got kicked out. You know, she got pregnant and her mom kicked her out. And she felt she found it funny, you know, like because her mom had three children by the time she was 16. I was like, 
we gotta dive deeper into this because three children by the time you're 16 we gotta look into some uncles some older because i guarantee it's some old man that fathered she and her siblings um anyway we're not we're not we're not gonna go there but they they commiserate on you know mental health concerns and the fact that they they both share that and so you know they they agree to be there for one another you know it just it just is what it is you just have to be there for your friend with mental health concerns as opposed to um what crystal does which is weaponize it and use it as um a deflection you know yeah no nah. Um, so they're good. You know, they, they seem to get along quite well. Okay, Tiana, she meets with Mr. Hibachi again at the property. And this home is beautiful. This condo is beautiful. The views, the views. This is what I'm talking about. This is why I'm here. This is why I'm here. It's a two bedroom, two and a half bath. That's what, that's, that always brings me, <laughs> brings me pause. It's like, uh, wait, what? Two bedrooms. Two bedrooms and two baths, that's all I get. For for, the, for all the money y'all asking me for, that's all I get. And I know that he said he was willing to leave the furniture that was there in there. And like he has it um, staged really nice. So whoever does decide, you know, they're going to go ahead and make an offer, you know, listen. They're getting their bang for their buck as far as the, the furniture goes. And, and that is already furnished fully. You know, and that it looks nice in there. It stays really nice. Um, they step outside and look at the balcony because there are three, by the way. I'm just like, this home is beautiful. I don't know why he want to give it up. Um, it would be perfect for somebody from New York. They already, you know, established that because they will appreciate the city. They'll appreciate the high rise. They'll appreciate all of it. That all that it gives. They'll they'll appreciate the fact that it is a small space. But look at look at look at look at it. <laughs> it's aesthetically pleasing. It's just it's it's good to go. So she tells them. Well, he asks. You know, he's he's still worried about this not being a seller's market. So he asks again. He reiterates, "Is this a seller's market? Like, are you sure?" And she says she's sure that it is. She's thinking that it, you know, it can go for one point five million. And he says, "Oh, one point five million. Oh, you can forget it, forget about it." So I don't think that's gonna be enough. Um, Robin and Kiana they sit down to flesh it all out, and they immediately get into that dinner, and how it went left. Kiana, she explains what her intentions were. Um, of course, Robin feels like, well, it started out peaceful. It started out a good thing. And then then I was met with, well, I just find it funny. And well, I just want to say, you know, and so it went left. She felt attacked and she immediately got in, in defense mode. Understandably, <laughs> like I like that's, I understand that. I, I understand um, being ambushed with some bullshit, you know, like, we linking, I'm thinking it's all good. And then you come out of nowhere on some. So I just, I didn't like when you said, so I didn't like that you did. And it's like, you couldn't have called me on the line. You want to wait till we get here. That girl has had a whole year to call Robin with, I'm mad at you. You wait till y'all filming until she's pitching a, a, a business idea to talk about why you mad and so i get i get the the i get why kiana's annoyed and i also get why robin's annoyed um it just wasn't the right time or the right setting she set up a an atmosphere where they could attack her um because kira chimed right on in with and you guys are and, and y'all stop following me which is trivial and petty and just not important so I understand <laughs> why she was annoyed. Kiana doesn't want to take accountability, you know, in her being the pot stirrer, her being the reason, you know, that things went left in the first place. Now, granted, it didn't have to go left because Robin could have very well let it roll off her back instead of being so defensive. But again, you don't come at me crazy and expect me not to have a reaction. Everybody is not emotionally mature. <laughs> Some people are triggered 
to respond to your bullshit. So it just is what it is. Um, they do agree, you know, kind of agree to disagree, you know, because Robin can take accountability, you know, but it's like Kiana wants to beat her over the head with, well, I don't like, I didn't like your apology. I don't feel like your apology was sincere. Da, 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 da. Just, just questioning everything. And Robin is just like, girl, I said I was sorry. Like, I really want to move on from this. <laughs> I really want to move on. But you seem to want to drag me. And it's like, do you want me to beg? Do you, uh, What do you want me to say? It's like that Giselle thing, you know, where somebody apologizes to her. And yet, it's just not good enough. She wants you to grovel and beg a little bit. And ain't nobody doing that. Ain't nobody doing that, Kiana. Um, after that, though, you know, we end on we end on this note <laughs> on Kiana wanting to talk about um, why you know why she wanted to charge her five hundred per contract when she had twenty nine contracts out there. You know, she want to know what's up with that. So that's what we gonna pick up next week. Um, eh. Y'all, I'm trying. I'm really trying to stay on this Ladies Who List ride. But um, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard given the circumstances, you know, the fact that it's just not... It's just tired. It's just tired. It's just tired. This whole um, formula is passe. Okay? I'm over it. Anyway, I had I had to do it though. I have to commit. I committed to it, and I can't let the people down. Can't let all thirty people that watch <laughs> the the ladies who list reviews. I can't let y'all down. Can't let y'all down. Anyway, be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It's called me Busby, and I'll chat with you later. Peace and light. <laughs>